going over tonight just a couple of submissions from back. Okay. Notice some of the guys now starting to play, look at the arm bar off the back and also looking at the bow and arrow chain. I've mean, touched on it before, just to point a couple of little, little pieces out. So, just a piece of I know some guys have some variations, so I'll go over a couple of things. So just recapping this position here. I've got a preference. Some guys like those seat belts, especially guys doing more no gear than gear. This will seem like a more comfortable setup. And again, feeling the car is easier for me. Quite easy for me. Okay? On that, that, that topic, I feel it. So the hand's got to come under the chin. Feel it into your hand. Rather than, I used to make a common mistake for me, is I do this, I hold it in tight, and then find a couple of bloody thumb in. So by the time I did get the grip, the other guy was defending it well, and I'm struggling. And it took, it took ages for the penny to drop. Uh, this scooting underneath and that feeding in. Because even there, as Josh picks his chin, I won't do this too many times because I'm not going to talk television properly. I'm going to use this part of my hand here to get under his chin and I'm going to whirl it through. Okay? So it makes it hard work for somebody to keep the chin in. You do get the odd phenomenon like Carl, who's got the ability to pull his head back inside his diaphragm. Okay? It's so, I've got preferences. My initial gi training was from Judo, so I'm going to do it for me, but I'm going to from the seat belt as well. So, what we're going to look at from this is we'll do the bow and arrow choke first. Okay? So, what I'm looking at here is again, the hand comes over, and I literally scoop the shoulder and I try and tuck, trace under the chin, and just feed the column. Okay? So, once I've got that, that's tight. Now, the thing I found, I used to make a mistake when I first started doing the bow and arrow choke. I go too deep. And then when I drop for the leg, I ended up really cranking in my own wrist. So getting the grip deep is good if you're looking for the initial choke. So if he defended that and I couldn't get the finish on this, and I couldn't get my arm up behind his head to finish, okay, as I go for the leg, I'll let this slip a little. So I want the cloth to be coming under his chin rather than it being all on my wrist. Because I find that that's when the pressure comes on yourself. So I fed that in, fed that into the collar. The next thing for me, I'm not reaching forward for the cloth here. I'm actually going to throw myself around to the side. Okay? So my arm will come around so I can lean. But this is a, a point where I've noticed when the guys are, I've been going for this, where it goes wrong for them. They get the cloth, okay? And then what they do is they drop back here and try to finish. Now, you, you have to finish it here. This leg underneath is in a bad place. And if you've got somebody who's quite flexible, they'll arch, and you kind of run out of room to shrug. And it turns into a very physical thing. Okay? So the little note, the thing that can make the world of difference with this, is once you've got your grip and you throw here, I'm actually going to drop that way. And as I drop, I lift this leg out and kick it. So he drops in the gap. So now, I sit back, he comes up against my hips. He's, it can bend all the lines from here, that's solid against my hips. And if you want to you know, come through and close your guard, that's up to you. But he's going nowhere there. So you can see the difference. If I was across his back with my leg underneath him, Josh can really bend up here. And if I have got a looser grip, I'm not going to finish it. But even having a tighter grip there is not going to do me any good. Because I'm going to be putting pressure on my own wrist. Okay. So the direction you're going to go is here. As you get more familiar with it, you'll get your grip. You'll go for the leg and you'll kick all in one. If you can scoop the leg like this and grab your own collar, so if I turn this, do it this way. Because so I've got the grip, and again, I might want to scoop on the leg up, grab my own collar, like all if I was going for an armbar. He's going nowhere. And then as I sit back, no escape. Okay, this gets what I've done. I've not found a way to get out of it yet unless the person gives a grip up. Okay? Another little note to think, this arm, you can't afford to have your elbow and your bicep on his head. It's got to be behind. So this elbow wants to clamp into your body. Because a possible escape if it is loose, if Josh gets his hand behind my elbow and grabs it and pops it up, 
is underneath. If that was to happen, because your legs are here very quickly, you'd have to switch for the arm. Okay, so you've got a backup. But if you drop, as you drop round, this one here, so twist. As it goes, this elbow is into my own hip. Okay? Now here I've got a very loose grip. So I think I might not quite work here. I'll let me on his head. So it's just literally, he's still up against my hip. I can step over, I can even put my foot in the side of his head. Yeah? So if you find that you've got too loose a grip, you can do it. You can even do it that way. Depends how flexible the chest is you are with it, it's because the idea of the weekend has nothing to do with the chest. Yeah? With that note there, the direction is the biggest thing. Okay, the amount of times, and I've been guilty of it, that's why I recognise it so much. Of not going for, okay, get this, get the grip, and then the guy drops this way. And a defensive tactic would be just lay on the leg. If he grabs my leg now, he can make it hard work for me to finish. Does that make sense? I can't even get my leg over his head properly. Okay? So, but if that happens, he hasn't got hold of you. Pull him onto you. Keep the leg out. See how I can sit up? Yeah? You can actually... Sorry, Josh. Yeah? Look that. If you scoop the leg, do that. It's the outside of the knee. Don't grab the top of the knee. Grab the outside of the knee. There's no good. You also don't want it down at the ankle. Grab at the knee and do a good steer. Okay? Now, another slight variation. The guy's kind of flexible. I used to play this. I get this, I go to there, and I keep this foot underneath. So as I drop, I'm actually going for this leg. So now you see the effect. I'm wringing him out. Okay? You can even. So there's no way to escape, there's no movement, the pressure's horrible, and you can find it, you know, it's the, the stretching of the leg that makes people tap. I've made people tap before from doing the pressure pass, just because of the pressure on the hips and the, the flexibility. Okay? So again, it's just it's a, a possible option, you never know where you'll find yourself. But with this, as I drop, I slip this through. So as I come to here, pick it up. See, I bring my leg. So if I can scoop it, I'm scooping it because I think I broke my little finger, so it's a little bit difficult. I bring this this way. Do exactly the same. Yeah, and then if I can scoop it to here, I try to put my hand the back of here now. Do that one. You've got the grips. He's bottomed out on the floor. He's not using you as a pivot, as a movement, or anything. He's flat on the floor. That's why you need this leg out. Sense. Yeah? So let's have a little play at that. Get the grip and then it's this off to the side towards his leg. Whereas in your head you'll think by a clock that you can reach here, drop back. You'll find that your leg will get stuck. Okay? Just have a try. If anybody gets stuck, please shout. Yeah?